Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, pray the Lord and God keeps takes keeping care of us and he is a wonderful father. And so let us give thanks to him for what he is. Father God in heaven, we appreciate you for the goodness. We appreciate you for your self-keeping and for every opportunity. Thank you that you are giving us this time to share from your word. Pray the Lord you bless us as we meditate together in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I welcome you. And in this episode, we continue thanking God for every opportunity. He is a lover God. He is a caregiving God. He is a protection giving God. He is a provider father. And so he keeps providing for us at all times in all situations. And so um, I come with a message from his word. Actually, I carry a pretty Bible where we have to read and energize ourselves with it. And we have been looking at various personalities in the Bible, and it seems like it actually does great work for me. Because every person that is spoken about in the Bible has a message. And we have talked about personalities with good character. We have talked about, with, about personalities with bad character, those who were righteous men and those that were righteous women and those that were evil people and all of them leave a message for us and so even during our generation we read about god is this god is word and internalize the meaning and so that we pick a lesson we have talked about various people in the bible i've talked about abraham we have talked about joseph we have talked about isaac we have talked about moses we have talked about aaron joshua and the rest of them including the women like rahab ruth naomi and others. Now, we have also looked about, talked about Esther, Hadassah, a woman. And now, today, this time we talk about, I single out, I single out a man called Mordecai. And we cannot talk about Mordecai without mentioning Esther. And of course, in one of the episodes, I've already shared about Esther, Hadassah. And now, I sing out Mordecai because he lives great lessons and Mordecai we read about him in the book of Esther it's Esther is one of the books in the Bible and it bears the name of this lady I told you at one moment that actually there are two books in the Bible in the Old Testament Bible that bear feminine, feminine names and this is the woman called Ruth and another one is called Esther and in the book of Esther we read about several characters and one of the characters that we're talking about is Mordecai. And he is introduced in the book here, um, in the book of Esther, in chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. And in this Bible, it talks about him as in this way. Now there was a Jew in Susa, the citadel, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jaya son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjamite. Now, when they mention Benjamite, they are talking about the tribe to which he belonged. And um, of course, actually, you remember that there are 12 tribes of Israel, and one of them was the tribe of Benjamin. And so he, Mordecai belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. And in verse 6, the Bible said that this man had been carried away from Jerusalem among the captives carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away. And so this is what introduces him. He, he was one of the Jews that were in diaspora. And he was there, and this is when many, many events unfolded about Esther. And so this man is talked about as one of the key people that saved the nation of Israel. Of course, Esther did, like we have already seen previously. And now, here he comes as a person to teach us something, you and I, that we can learn something from Mordecai. But first, we have to know and remember that Mordecai was an adoptive parent to this lady, uh, Esther. He was a mentor. These days, we have the language of mentorship. And so he mentored this young lady. He was Esther's confidant. 
Esther, a leader that we've talked about already, learned, actually took his, her, she took her message, great stand, and basing on what this man did. And this is Mordecai. Mordecai was Esther's cheerleader. He played the role of cheering her up. And so he played the role of protection, protecting this young lady. And of course you remember that Esther came into his care when she was a little girl, having lost her parents. And so Mordecai stands out as a cheerleader, as a protection father, as an adoptive parent. And the Bible talks about him as well, Esther's cousin, uh, because it was she was her uncle's uh, son or something. He was her uncle's son, but he stands out in his own right. So Mordecai leaves great thing, great lessons for us. And so, he, because he did great work in Esther's life, he brought her up as her daughter, as his daughter. And we have read about him several in this book of Esther. And I want to urge that actually you take your time and read. Because this little time that we talk about him may not be enough. But when you read, God may reveal something fresh. God may reveal something new in your life. So Mordecai was very, very instrumental in someone's life. And mark that one. Mordecai was very, very instrumental in somebody's life. And just like anyone else, all of us are who we are. Because we've had people that are instrumental in our, own, in, our own, in our own lives. Could be you also. Could be another person. But there are people that play a lot of roles in our life, in our upbringing, in our safety, protecting us, providing for us. At least someone must have taken care of us. So Mordecai is a man that comes out as a person who protected, who provided who cheered up Hadassah, the lady called Esther. And so he comes out and he becomes very, very instrumental in the lives of the Jewish nation that was nearing annihilation. And annihilation was kind of genocide that was being planned to destroy all the people of Israel. Of course, Esther stands out, but Mordecai stands out as a person. So his attributes that he, he exhibits here are good, are wonderful, are good enough for us to embrace you and I, read about him, because he had hope, he possessed wisdom, he exhibited faith, he showed compassion, and he's a man of, he was a man of courage. And so we stand out to read about him, so that in our, in our times, and so that where we are, be it at home, be it at work, be it whatever, these attributes are good to emulate. So he stood up for the rights of other people. In our society, we need, we still need people who will stand out for the rights of other people, identifying some other person's strengths, even when they are weak, but standing with them, encouraging them, strengthening them, mentoring someone. And this is very, very important. Of course, he mentored a young lady who eventually became the savior of the Jewish nation. So Mordecai leaves us great lessons. I've read about him. I've thought about him. And how I pray that you also pick something from Mordecai, the man that impacted his society. Like we have talked about other personalities. We talk about people, that, people of impact, impacting society, impacting family. Now talk about church. People that will leave a legacy for the church, impacting church where you belong. And so it is important, wherever you are, wherever you have been planted, wherever God has positioned you. This man was in diaspora, a foreign nation, which was not his home. But they remained very, very key, him and this young lady that we've already talked about. So Mordecai was good. He had a good heart for others. And I see that actually it's a very, very good attribute, very, very important attribute, having compassion to the needs of other people. Now, this attribute of compassion is becoming very rare. Now, people nurse very little compassion for other people. But 
Mordecai challenges us that he was always available for this young lady, even if it meant taking time, sitting alone, walking to gate to the gate every day. We read about him in chapter 2, verse 11. And this is what the Bible says, that actually this man, his compassion, his care, his provisions for this young lady, that every day, every day Mordecai walked in front of the gate of the court of the harem to learn how Esther was and what was happening to her. This was commitment. This was love. This was care. And so, friends, I see this man standing out, his compassionate spirit for the people. Esther, number one. And then the entire Jewish nation, now that he felt sorry and prayed and fasted. Now, is there any lesson that you can pick from here? That every day you will care for someone? That every day you take care of somebody? That every day you will think about somebody? And how I pray for you, Mordecai lives as a challenge here. He was caring and fatherly. And we need such attribute in our society today. People who are caring and fatherly, okay, talk about caring and motherly. Because actually all is an all-embracing title that actually we need to have. So he brought up Esther with the potential. He wished her well. Do you wish another person well? Do Mordecai well. Take care of somebody. You never know what this person will be. You never know what this person will be. Now, may God, God is spirit that was upon Mordecai be upon you. That somebody will stand out and say, yes, I had an uncle. Yes, I have an, an aunt. Yes, I have a brother. Yes, I have um, a relative that have taken care of me. And so people, this is the message of God. So Mordecai, a motivator of sorts, he leaves me a message of motivating another person. Now, one other attribute that Mordecai leaves with me as me and you, my brother, my sister, is actually was courageous in his dealings, standing for his beliefs in the Jewish nation. He stood for them. He was a proud Jew, never swayed. He was committed to his beliefs. Now, even when there was a time when Haman, whom we shall also have time to talk about, did whatever he did, but Mordecai stood for his beliefs. Many times I've given up what we treasure. Many times I've given up our treasurable beliefs. You know, so there are some actually even cultural things that are nice. You know, the way we do our things that glorify God, like the way of dressing, the way of doing things. Many times we have deviated from them, but Mordecai was a proud person to remain with his beliefs. So remain true. Remain true to the beliefs of your society that are valuable. That are valuable. You know, Mordecai could not even bow down to Herman, as we read in chapter 2, chapter 3, verses 2, 3, 4, 5 there. That because he knew what he was, and so he stood for his beliefs. He never backed down. He remained true to the right truths. Remained true to the right truths. Now, this generation is swayed. is being taken away from what is true, from what is good, from what is lovely, from what is excellent. And people now want to go and do other things. The way of dressing, the talk, and how we treat our bodies. Things like that. What does the Bible say that is relevant, that you should take care of how we look after our bodies and then our environment and many things like that. Now, may God, who stood with Mordecai, stand with you, stand with me, so that we can be able to stand up. And so this man remained courageous, remained formidable. He never backed down on what, what was right. He never gave up what was right. And so you and I, 
need to take this showing loyalty and bravery, being faithful. Now, Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, talks about being faithful stewards. Will you be a faithful steward, my brother? Will you be a faithful steward, my sister? And so that actually um, your presence today will be talked about tomorrow. The legacy that you live today, the good that you do today, the strength that you exhibit today will be talked about. Now, these are thousands and thousands of years ago when the Bible was written. But you still remember this man. Like I've already said before in other episodes concerning personalities, people did things and they stood out of the crowd and they talked about here. And so and I, you and I need to do something in our generation that will be counted. Mordecai stands out as a strong believer in what he did. Now, one other thing that actually, which is a very rare commodity in our times, and even then, was that actually Mordecai exhibited wisdom. Wisdom is very, very rare. It's a commodity. And of course, we read about a, a wise woman who builds her house in Proverbs 14.1. But foolishness breaks things, destroys things. Now, Mordecai here proved intelligent. During his time and his wisdom, his intelligence enabled the Jewish nation to stand. Now, many times he would tell Esther, do the right thing, but be wise. And in chapter 2, he gave Esther some wisdom. 2.10, he said, Told Esther, don't reveal your identity yet. Wait for the appropriate time. Said, just hold it. Because of okay, something that wait for the appropriate time to do certain things. Now, appropriate time. Even the words that we speak. Sometimes you may be speaking the truth, but you speak it at the wrong time. Sometimes you can be acting rightly, but you act rightly at the wrong time. And then other people misinterpret what you're doing. Now, Mordecai in his wisdom told Esther, don't at this time reveal your identity. Because actually, she had to know that she was not a Persian, she was not a Babylonian, but she was a Jew. And so she had to wait for an appropriate time until it was more meaningful. And friends, I've taken note of this very, very keenly, that you may be doing things, doing them well, doing them the right way, doing them the, the better way. But when you do them in the wrong time, there will, be, there will be a tendency to misinterpret and to misappropriate what you do. And so this is important. In chapter 2, verse 10, in 83, she had to follow the wise counsel from this man, her uncle Molokai. And so, friends, I treasure doing the right thing at the right time. The reason why we have always quoted there is time for everything. Even when you are in the house, husband and wife, there are moments when you can speak, not speak anything at any time, at anywhere, because she is your wife or because he is your husband. But when the time is due, when it, the time is appropriate and the place is appropriate, you know, there can, you can say anything, yes, but wait for the right time and at an appropriate time and meaning will come out very well. Now, Mordecai advised Esther to do the right thing at the right time. And this is, for me, I gathered this one from this man that he exhibited wisdom, he exhibited intelligence. Now, one other thing that I actually discover from Mordecai that I've picked, and I hope you do also, he exhibits hope in God. Now, this hope, he instilled it into Esther, the person that we talked about, that we have read about. Now, he exhibits this in his own dealings, but also instills the same. Now, hope, friends, parents do the same to your children. Now, leaders do the same to your people. And so, this is what we desire to have as of now. So, we can hope in God. You too can hope in God and discover God is calling. I too can discover God is calling now. And direction in situations 
we find ourselves. Now, these people found themselves in a very difficult situation. Now, you too can find yourself in a very difficult situation, but have hope in God that this is happening now. Look up. The moment today when I talked about, yes, when a situation is bringing you down, look up. Have hope. And a hopeless person, I said it before somewhere, I say it again, is a very dangerous person. But when you have hope, many things will fall into play. I have said that you plant a seed with a hope that it will germinate and it will grow and give you more proceeds. Yet, you are planting it in the soil when you are hungry, but you are hoping that you are going to get more. I have said it before, that you pay school fees for your child. Now, why should you pay fees? You, are, you don't have a shirt, you don't have a trouser, but you pay fees, you sink it there, but you, with the hope that something good will come out. And indeed, trusting God, believing God, something good comes out. So Mordecai instilled hope into this young lady. And so Mordecai stands out and he becomes a yardstick for my life. And I pray that God will speak something to you and will enable you to do something in your society, in your community, among the people that you lead. Because Mordecai was a leader. Now, one other thing that I want to mention very quickly is that actually he was a man of faith. He had the faith that at one day, one time, God will liberate the Jews. Of course, okay, the, there was a plan that was being, you know, mooted by a man that we shall talk about again. He's called Haman. Now, but Mordecai knew that okay, at one moment, one time, Something good will happen. And he knew that God was going to save his people. So he needed the faith to do things the way they were required. Mordecai was blessed later on because of the faith that he had in God. And so in chapter 4, we have read it before and we read it again, verse 13. It is because of the hope that actually Mordecai mentioned these things to Esther. And he said that um, then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not think to yourself that in the king's place that you are, you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at such a time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Can you imagine the hope that he had? That actually if you keep quiet, something, God will do something. Even if he doesn't mention God here, but he says salvation deliverance for these people will come from somewhere else, from somewhere at least. And this is the point that actually faith, he believed at one day. Now, which situation are you in that has, you know, bogged you down? Have faith in God, Mordecai did. And indeed, in chapter 10, verse 3, Mordecai, because of the faith that he had, he was elevated to a high place, to a high office in the land. And listen, in chapter 10, verse 2, the Bible says that, and all the acts of, the, of his power and might and the full account of the high honor of Mordecai, to which the king advanced him. Can you imagine? He was advanced, to which the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and the Persia? And verse 3 for Mordecai, the Jew, was the second in the rank of King Ahasuerus, and he was great among the Jews and popular with he, the multitude of his brothers. For he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to all his people. Pray the Lord. This is important for me. This is important for you. He, he actually searched. He took care. He minded about the welfare of his brothers. A very, very rare commodity these days that we needed to seek for the welfare of our brothers, the welfare of our sisters. Not only your own welfare, but the welfare of other people. And this is Mordecai now raised, advanced, being the second in command. And remember what happened to Joseph in Egypt? Many things happened, but up he went. Mordecai here, up he went. And all these people, remember, they were being raised in nations that were not their nations. They were in diaspora there. Joseph was in Egypt, and we have talked about Joseph before. And God raises people. Now Mordecai was raised, and he took care. He sought for the care of his people. 
Meaning, as I end, that having love for your nation. These days we talk a lot about patriotism. Talk about patriotism clubs in schools, patriotism clubs everywhere. Now, Mordecai leaves us. Those of us that talk about patriotism, I think one of the people that we need to quote in our talks, wherever we are, is Mordecai. Mordecai, he loved his nation, he loved his people, and if we take this example from him, he was a lover of his nation. Love your country, even when you are not, even, when, even those that are out of the country, love your nation, love your people, and so that actually, you take care of them, you do the right thing no matter what, and remain faithful to God. And so I pick something from Mordecai here, that actually God will enable you to learn something from Mordecai. Mordecai has left a great lesson for me, and may he leave the same to you. And so actually we live a life of impact, legacy, that when you are not there, someone will talk about what you have done, what you have said, and Mordecai was an impactful person, a mentor, and if therefore he had a mentee, someone that was looking up to him. Now, will you be somebody that somebody will be looking up to? Whether you are small or big, whether you are young or old, someone to look up to you. And so that may God help you, may God bless you, may God watch over us. As he watched upon Mordecai and the family, Mordecai and the nation, may he watch upon, upon us in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all of us I say, Amen. God be with you.